the sounds of spring. And softly blow the sweet breezes of May. A great American ritual begins. Spring has come to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Endlessly searching for excitement. We travel west to the Tournament of Roses. South for the Mardi Gras at New Orleans. Then north for the big boats racing on the lakes. And in the heart of America, we pack the town of Indianapolis for a solid month to watch the race cars run. We love cars bright and smooth, and the freedom to go where we like. And that love brings us here, the best place to be in the springtime. We dream of what it must be like, running wheel to wheel against the best drivers in the world. These are strange, legendary beasts, half man, half metal. They run a foot from the wall at fantastic speed and laugh at danger. We cannot understand this much bravery, and we never will. Even their costumes deceive us. They are both glorious and gaudy. They are jet pilots with a surgeon's skill. These are men able to gamble life against glory and have fun doing it. We see them at their best, qualification. Only the fastest 33 cars start the race. Twice that number are here to try. In four minutes of speed, four laps around this two and a half mile oval, the result of a year's planning and dreaming is known. In, out, nothing in between. Some face extra pressure, their own desire to drive their names into the record books. Jim Rathman is going against his brother's record. Two years ago, Dick Rathman set the track ablaze with speed of 146 miles an hour. Jim warms up at near record speed and turns it loose coming into the front stretch. Jim Rathman's first lap is less than a mile an hour faster than his brother's, but that's enough. The record is broken. This is what the crowd has come to see. Rathman qualifies. 146 and one half miles an hour. Perhaps the only person on the racetrack that isn't impressed with his own new record is Jim Rathman. I run better, he said, when I'm chasing somebody, or somebody's chasing me. Eddie Sachs on his way. His wife follows him as he disappears into the first turn. 
He inches up on that magic speed, 147 miles an hour. Rathman's record, barely an hour old, is smashed by Eddie Sachs. His total elapsed time, four minutes, five and 58 hundredths of a second, is barely half a second faster than Rathman. But that half second is enough to make Eddie Sachs weep with joy. Seven years ago, Sachs washed dishes at the Speedway cafeteria. In his own words, I was the biggest failure the Speedway ever saw. Indianapolis is full of Cinderella stories. The excitement on the racetrack is matched, beat for beat, by the fun in the infield. Yes, we have our homes, our jobs, our schedules. But once a year, we cut loose. of qualifiers length. Around and around they go. The pressure on those not fast enough grows with every tick of the stopwatch. Around and around and around. Sweet breath of spring was never as good. Spring is very sweet for Eddie Sachs. Now with the glory of a new record. But then a rookie comes along. Jim Herdebees. His name means nothing. They claim he's a natural born race driver. But Indianapolis is not impressed by claims. Then he stands on the throttle and things begin to happen. Herdebees turns corners faster than some men go on the straightaway. While pandemonium sweeps the speedway, he averages 149 miles an hour for four laps, and the crowd knows it has seen a once-in-a-lifetime performance. This is the tremendous climax to the qualification story. First, a brother's record broken. Then, Eddie Sachs turns failure to success. And now, a rookie, fastest of them all, brings the 150 mile an hour dream within reach. Is it any wonder, the only place to be in the springtime is Indianapolis. The wild rhythm of the racetrack works magic in the town. A quiet town, a business town, becomes an exotic storybook. Mardi Gras comes to the Midwest. Indianapolis overflows with celebrity. And at the quiet edge of town, another strange transformation. Race fans from a thousand miles around are camped in the streets near the speedway, in lines five miles long.
downtown, visitors and residents jam the sidewalks, waiting for the big parade. festival's royal court is presented to the guests of the governor. A thousand Cinderella's leave suburban kitchens to dance away the midnight hours. On the streets outside the speedway, there will be no sleep tonight. 10,000 fans are halfway through a night-long wait, which lasts until the gates of the Speedway open at 5 o'clock in the morning. The parade that began in the fading light of evening continues into the night. The whole city seems possessed by the need to dance, dance, dance. The circus is over. This is race day. The ritual continues in its ordered traditional manner. The measured tempo of 44 500. to the pits at a certain hour, cars to the starting line at a certain moment, a ritual and a ceremony viewed by a crowd that is growing with every moment. The drivers at their cars await the starting signal. Eddie Sachs, the winner of the pole position inside front row, he must lead the car safely past the starting line. Next to Eddie, Jim Rathman, center position, first row, a man who wants to win. Next to Jim, Roger Ward. Ward radiates the confidence of a champion. He is the man the others must beat. Johnny Thompson is one driver that might do it. Jim Herdebees, anxious to find out whether a rookie can win the race. It hasn't been done in 33 years. The drivers fight to keep down the tension. A.J. Foyt, the youngest driver, 25 years old, and Dwayne Carter, who has raced for 28 years, both share it. These are the agonizing moments. The stands are filled and the cars are ready. The largest crowd that Indianapolis has ever known packs the arena 
And here's again the time-honored words. Gentlemen, start your engines. Spoken by Speedway President Tony Holman. The fastest 33 cars ever to race anywhere, anytime, roll away from the starting line. Their average speed is 144 miles an hour. Top speed is estimated to be 180 miles an hour on the straightaway and 140 on the turns. These cars are all powered by similar four-cylinder Meyer Drake engines which are limited in displacement. In outward appearance, they do not seem to vary. But the hours of work and painstaking care built into each car cannot be seen. This race will be won by men. The men that build and adjust the cars and the man that drives it. Off the fourth turn, back to the starting line on the front stretch, ready to run, and the race is on! Roger Ward cuts across the track to take the lead. Jim Rathman right behind him. Into the second turn, chain lightning. Ward shows the way up the back stretch with Eddie Sachs passing Jim Rathman and taking second place. It's Roger Ward out in front as they head for the home stretch. Troy Rutman challenges. Rutman blasts his way through, almost second. He settles for third position. Four cars moving away at 141 miles an hour. A new record. After position four, the field is strung out the length of the straightaway, hoping that endurance, not outright speed, will win the race. So evenly matched are these cars that an advance of a single car length in the straightaway is a dazzling victory. To fall back and be passed, a bitter defeat. The records begin to topple. Ward leads Sachs by a split second after 10 laps. At 20, Ruckman has the lead. He pushes the speed to an incredible 142.8 miles an hour. By lap 30, Jim Rathman with Sachs right behind him is averaging 143 miles an hour. Lap 40. Roger Ward again in the lead. He has traveled 100 miles in 41 minutes. The tension of the early laps is dulled by the ceaseless roar of the engines. Stunned by the flashing metal and the blur of speed, the fans try to follow the tides of warfare. 400 miles lie ahead. Then, the first pit stops for tires and fuel. John Branson spins. I came in too hot, he said later. I ran fresh out of brains. Branson motions his crew to set him straight and send him back to the fight. Roger Ward in the pits. Last year's winner of the 500 is driving a new car built by A.J. Watson, his mechanic. Ward was running at the top of the pack before his stop. Four tires, fuel, and he's ready. He's rolling. No, no, Roger Ward has stalled his engine. Watson leaps the pit wall for the starter. Ward is helpless until his car is restarted as Jim Rathman and Eddie Sachs battle their way past the pits at 143 miles an hour. Ward hurtles out of the pits, aching to make up for lost time, 40 seconds behind. The hours wear away. The children lose interest. For the first 50 laps, excitement runs high. Then. They are past caring, past thinking. This is the time of greatest danger. The drivers must redouble their efforts to stay alert through the long, drowsy afternoon. Then the machines begin to fail under the strain. Pettenhausen stands high in his cockpit to avoid flames under the hood. His engine tore itself apart and caught fire as he rode it through the fourth turn. But Tony stayed with the car. Tough Tony has been in 28 accidents in his long racing career. This one is barely worth noticing. Look out! Eddie 
Jim Russo, intent on the competition, fails to see his tire is worn through. The tire reminds him. The yellow flag warns the other drivers of the danger. At the halfway point, 250 miles, nine cars are out of the race. Troy Rutman is giving up his car. Rutman is the first of the leaders out of the race. The lead has changed hands 16 times, and strain on the pace-setting cars is terrific. Many of the fans are past caring and want to go home. And some of the drivers have lost heart in the race. Car number 10 coughs to a stop on the backstretch. The fuel pump drive failed. And $30,000 worth of race car goes home at the end of a tow road. Jim Herdebees can coax no more from his machine. While rival mechanics applaud his brilliant effort, the rookie rolls in. Rookie no longer. He has proven himself at Indianapolis. Eddie Sachs' crew raised the hood, and Eddie has only the crowd's respect as consolation. He struggled against faulty steering gear until he faced the wall at the end of the straightaway and found he could barely twist the wheel. I thought I'd quit, he said, while I can still smile. Only 125 miles left to race, and suddenly the track is charged with excitement. Rolling in for pit stops are Roger Ward and Jim Rathman. Running in the same lap in position one and two. Rathman driving car number four has been second at Indianapolis three times. And he wants to win. It's a battle of pit crews as four tires are changed and Rathman is refueled in 21 seconds. But Ward is first away from the pit wall. Rathman's crew chief hears the roar of Ward's engine and slams down the lid on Rathman's fuel tank. Let's get this boy out of here! Only seconds apart, the leading cars are back on the track with one quarter of the race, 125 miles still to be run. The crowd lets loose a tremendous roar as the two hottest cars on the track get up to speed. On the backstretch, Rathman closes in behind Ward. They're near top speed, but back off for the third turn. Now. They're traveling. Here they come, wheel to wheel. Ward leads. Coming around again, Ward holds that lead, but Rathman pulls even, coming into the straightaway, and then takes position one. A.J. Watson, Ward's mechanic, is up against tough competition himself. Watson built that race car that Rathman is driving, and here they come. Ward, with a tremendous burst of speed, takes back the lead as he roars past Watson and his pit crew. On the backstretch, Rathman dives deep into the corner, long past the point where they usually back off, and takes position one again. crew cheers him on as Ward pulls even. Not enough. Rathman jams his foot down and turns a lap at 143 miles an hour to keep the lead. But suddenly, a new threat. Johnny Thompson is standing on the throttle, gaining one second each lap in a wild bid to capture the front runner. Rathman and Ward are flying, but Thompson is closing in. Thompson is only eight seconds behind and gaining. Faced with Thompson's challenge, Ward takes the lead again. Thompson in the pits. The last car that stood a chance of beating Ward and Rathman is through. But Thompson's sensational run has changed strategy in the final laps. Neither Ward nor Rathman can dare stop now for new tires, since a stop by one will almost certainly give the race to the other. They have barely enough rubber left on their tires to carry them the distance. 
but Rathman is brave. Driving straight for the wall at 146 miles an hour, Rathman dives deep into the corner and takes back the lead. Rathman holds his lead, blasting through the turns, even though he can see the cord on his tires. Ward is slowing down. His tires are almost worn through. If you can't catch the front runner, there's no use hanging it on the wall. There's the white flag. Only one lap to go. Rathman in front. Ward drops back. Here comes Rathman, the bravest man on the racetrack, taking the checkered flag. Rathman immediately slows down. His tire's good for only two more laps. Ward, 12 seconds behind, finishes in second place. Rathman's coup is wild. His car owners, in their first attempt at the Speedway, have romped home with more than $110,000 the winner's share of the Speedway's record-breaking purse of $369,000. Here comes the winner, a 31-year-old builder of go-karts and owner of a speed equipment shop in Miami, Florida. This was Jim Rathman's 11th race. This victory, together with Rathman's three second-place finishes in past 500s, makes him one of the biggest money winners in racing history. Jim Rathman's winning time for the 500 miles was three hours, 36 minutes. An average speed better than 138 miles an hour. Rathman's car and all others running in this grueling test of speed and endurance depended on Bose brake fluid, the choice of the Indianapolis winners for the past four years. This is the same Bose brake fluid which is available to the motoring public, a quality product which has been successfully tested here at the world's greatest automotive proving ground. The skies have cleared. The first hint of summer's heat beats down. The ritual of spring has come to an end. We are a restless people who have found excitement. Satisfied, we return to our quiet lives. The racetrack, the festival, the excitement of racing is behind us. A year will pass before we return, but we will be back, drawn by the magic of the words, the Indianapolis 500.